Hey guys, Mike here with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. We are going to be going into the next part of our recovery series and talking about tree straps. Um, again, just like our last video, talking about capacities, this is not an end-all beat-all to uh, everything about tree straps and all rigging, but it is something that will help you make a good decision when purchasing a tree strap for your kit and also uh, some basic rigging that will help you identify uh, hopefully if a tree strap is set up correctly in a winching scenario or other type of scenario. Stay tuned. So when choosing the right tree strap for your vehicle, uh, you want to make sure first and foremost that it's rated correctly. If you have questions about ratings, go check out our last video. Um, but for your tree strap, you want it to be rated to double your winch capacity. You want that minimum brake strength. Again, minimum brake strength, MBS, or minimum tensile strength, MTS, to be rated to double your winch capacity. So if you have a 10,000 pound winch, you need a strap that's rated to 20,000 pounds. So <clears throat> what are tree straps though? Tree straps, we get them from the overhead lifting industry. They are an eye to eye sling. So they have eyes sewn on each end here. And uh, then they are looped back together and sewn into an assembly or webbing as they're called in the overhead lifting industry. We've adapted them to tree straps. Uh, tree straps have less than typically 5% stretch so they're not uh, for kinetic recoveries and things like that by themselves. Now with tree straps when we're choosing them double the winch capacity for the uh, minimum brake strength or minimum tensile strength but there's some other things that we can look at to make sure that we get a good tree strap. One, and very important, is right here where the loops are sewn back onto them. We want that stitching to run parallel with the strap, not perpendicular back and forth. If they run parallel, it's gonna be much stronger than if it runs perpendicular back and forth. That is a good uh, 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 thing to look for. It kind of shows a good quality strap when we're choosing one. Minimum of three inches wide. We don't want anything narrower than three inches, especially here on the East Coast, because we have really soft bark trees. And anything narrower than three inches typically is gonna damage the bark on the tree when we wrap it around. Now, personal opinion, I don't like a tree strap over six to 10 foot in length. Anything longer, I find it's a lot more cumbersome to work with, um, and I don't find where anything uh, longer than 10 foot really adds any benefit. So. Other personal opinion for the eyes, I like what we call a folded eye where they take the width of the strap here, okay, and they fold it in half to make the eye. I also like uh, some type of abrasion guard sewn into my eye, again, because these are the wear points of the strap. There are other types of eyes called a folded and twisted eye where they put a twist in it and then just standard eyes with no fold or twist or just standard twisted eyes. I like the flat folded eyes. I find them easier to work with. And I do like a larger loop. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So <clears throat> the other thing I like is some type of abrasion guard on the strap. Uh, that lets me wrap it around rougher bark trees, things like that. Even some non-sharp rocks that won't damage the strap. It'll hold up a little bit better. Uh, so. <clears throat> that's what I'm looking for typically when purchasing a strap um, obviously there's other factors that could play differently into your scenario but those are the most important that I find all right guys so rigging wise with our tree straps I'm going to show you two different types of rigging that we use in winching scenarios um, or when attaching to an anchor point the most common way that you are going to attach your tree strap is what we call a basket configuration where we wrap it around the tree and we bring the eyes back stacking the eyes and then make our connection here this is a basket configuration it is the strongest configuration you can use a tree strap for so again this is the most common now i've got it lifted up the tree to show and make it easier for videoing here but typically when we rig our tree strap especially in this configuration we want to rig from the knees down unless there are some other extenuating circumstances making you have to rig it up higher but again basket configuration most common and strongest way you can rig this the other type of rigging I want to show you is what we call a choker now this is for those extenuating circumstances right maybe 
you come up short and you need a couple of extra feet or you have to rig higher up on your anchor point or tree and it keeps falling down in the basket because it's just going to fall and go down the tree. So what we want to do is, making sure it's flat around the tree, feed your eye back through a loop here. Now it will secure itself on the tree even if we let go, it will keep itself higher up the tree. What you want to make sure of is that it goes flat all the way around the tree. We don't want any twists in it. The flat, actually that friction is what will hold it and instead of coming off and letting a bend go straight back to the vehicle, let it come off the side of the tree and point back towards your vehicle. That way, again, it's not cinching down on the tree and girdling the tree while we're at it. Also, you're going to gain a couple extra feet when you hook it up this way, um, but there is strength loss when you hook it up this way. So keep that in mind in your rigging. All right, YouTubers, so once you make the connection and the rigging around your anchor point, stacking your eyes, this is a perfectly suitable connection point for a bow shackle, a soft shackle when they're rigged correctly, um, even if you're using a sling hook or a web hook on the end of your winch that is suitable, the larger hooks, then you can hook that directly to the eyes of your straps. Um, but that is basic rigging and choosing the right tree strap for your recovery kit. I do recommend carrying two to three tree straps in your recovery kit if you have to spread out different anchor points or use them for other types of rigging. Um, and I'd sort of vary the lengths in that six to 10 foot range. So thanks for joining us guys. Make sure that you like uh, and subscribe to our channel. Also uh, share this with your friends that are into the off-road world. Uh, every little bit helps us uh, to spread awareness with this YouTube stuff. So uh, check out our website and stuff for future classes if you are interested, or you can check out the International Four Wheel Drive Trainers Association website to find a certified trainer in your area. But thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on the trail soon. Bye.